no matter what you've done in your life, no matter how bad you think you have been, it's good to know that we serve a God that can save you, that can forgive you of all your sins and make something beautiful out of what appears to be a bad situation. Amen. Amen. We can start singing this last song.
We owe the Lord some thanks. We owe him some praise in his house. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now, God, because this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, God, we thank you for how you just kept us all week long, God. We thank you for your protection, God, how you kept us as you traveled to and fro, God, those that was going to work and those that were yet at home, God. We thank you, oh God, for your angels just camping all around us, oh God. And oh God, we asking you on this day, God, to just have your way in this place, oh God. Move by your spirit, oh God. Oh God, send forth your word through the woman of God on this afternoon, oh God. Oh God, we open up our hearts and our ears to hear what you have to say unto us, oh God. And but God, we asking you on this day, God, to help us to just hold on and hold out, oh God. To help us to just stand on your word, oh God. And trust you, God. Oh God, we just love you. We appreciate you, God. And oh God, we ask you to go and bless the sick and shut in, God. Oh God, we ask you to touch, heal, deliver, and set free, God. And oh God, we ask you to save somebody, oh God. Oh God, in, the, in this, this time, God, that we're going through, oh God. And oh God, we're asking you, oh God, to help us to continue to just lift our eyes unto the hills, God, from which cometh our help. And Lord, we know that all of our help comes from you, oh God. And we just thank you on this day, God. We won't forget to give your name all the glory, all the praise. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We're going to have our Reverend Bush come up and as she gets ready to come up, like I told you before, for some reason I keep feeling this old school spirit in my, in my soul. And my mind runs back to the early 80s, late 70s. My mother used to take me down to my godfather's church, the late Bishop Billy Robinson at the Garden of Prayer Church of God of Christ Cathedral in the Bronx. And they used to always sing this song. And so we just gonna sing this song. For those who know, you can help us sing. Those that don't know, let us learn real quick. It's a very simple song. Come and show that blessing for the ball.
And God is a very present help in a time of trouble. How many of you believe that? The 10th verse lets us know of that same chapter. Be still and know that I am God. I, God, will be exalted in the earth. Amen? Amen. No matter what you think, God said he's going to be exalted in the earth because he is God. The Lord of hosts, which is with us. The God of Jacob, which is our refuge. Say, Lord. I've been saying this month, and I'm saying again, a refuge is a safe place. A shelter from the storm. It's a rest and a shelter from pursuit of danger and of trouble. And we're so glad to know that God is our refuge. He has been our dwelling place through all generations. The same God that was with Jacob, he's with us. Amen. And I'm going to give you the thought for today. Amen. Don't let the moment make a fool of you. Don't let the moment make a fool of you. God is yet our source. He is the source of our joy. He is the strength of my life anyway. I don't know about you. God is the strength of my life. Because Good Friday is the day that seemed to be the darkest 
day in history, and it turned out to be the best day in the long run because it gave each and every one of us a right to the tree of life. And it allowed each and every one of us to be saved if we accept the finished work of Jesus Christ on Calvary. What are you saying? The only way we can be saved is because of Good Friday. Had Jesus not died for our sin, we wouldn't have that opportunity. Amen? So the story of Palm Sunday, which we celebrate today, can be found in the 21st chapter of Matthew. Palm Sunday is the day that Jesus entered into Jerusalem as Savior and as King. He rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. There was a large crowd there awaiting him, and they laid palm branches and cloaked some things across the road to give Jesus the royal treatment that he deserved. You got to pay attention now. You see, Jesus was somewhat of a celebrity at this time. Not being able to get my words out is not because I don't know words. Amen? It's because of age, but guess what? The devil is a liar. Amen. Amen. Jesus was somewhat of a celebrity at this moment in history. Amen. It was at this moment he was a celebrity because the story had preceded him of how he had raised Lazarus from the dead and how he had done many miracles. So now he's on his way to Jerusalem and people there are wanting to see this man who raised Lazarus to the dead. You must understand that this story has many similarities to life today. Just like today, if you do something good or pleasing for people, they will speak well of you for the moment. Amen? Amen. Somebody needs some gas money and you give them some gas money, you are the best person in town for the moment. So in this moment, they had heard of how Jesus had uh, raised Lazarus from the dead and how there had been miracles that had happened under his hand. So they were there waiting and they were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, son of David. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Psalms 118.25 reads, please, Lord, please save us. Please, Lord, please give us success. The Hebrew word, Hosanna, is translated in the Greek as Osanna, and then we today in English, we say Hosanna. The original intent of the word is what we're talking about today, and the original intent of the word was save us, Lord. It is viewed as a plea for help. It's as if we were yelling, stop when somebody's about to drop a firecracker on us or shoot us. And we stop and we say, I surrender. Help us. Amen? In moments like these, in times when we're feeling so helpless and we cannot save ourselves, it is in these times that we need to connect to the source of our security. Amen? And we are like that example of a firecracker about to drop on us. We surrender, throw our hands up, and we say, Hosanna, save us, help us. So it's in times like these that we are crying, Hosanna. We've come to the end of our own understanding. We need help from you, God. We need to hear from you. We need a word from you. If we don't hear from you, Lord, we don't know what we're going to do. If we read further in the 118th Psalm, that next verse where they cried out, Hosanna, we will notice that after they cried out, help us, Lord, uh, strengthen us, Lord, give us success, Lord, in the next verse they became very confident and they began to really be confident in what they believed. And what was that? In the 26th verse of the 118th Psalm, after they cried out for help, they shifted from very concerned and confused to saying, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. So today on Palm Sunday, it is very important for us as Christians to remember that this is the day that Jesus began his journey to the cross. Luke, the 19th chapter, records the story beginning in the 41st verse and it tells of how Jesus approached Jerusalem and saw the city and it says when he saw the city he began to weep and they said he wept 
and said, even you, only you speaking to the people there, knew on this day what it would cost for, to bring peace. Amen. It's hidden in you. In other words, there's a lot of things that are going on we don't understand, but if we only knew what the end was going to be. There's a scripture that says, Lord, make us to know our end. Make us to know why we're going through what we're going through. Make us to understand why this is happening to us. And what he says, if you only knew, there will be joy after this. So you see, Jesus wept for Jerusalem in the midst of the praise of the moon. Jesus wept because he knew in his heart that he would have to, it wouldn't be long before these same people that were praising him were going to turn their backs on him. That these same people would betray him. That these same people will be part of the ones that crucified him. So in the midst of the praise, his heart was broken with the reality of what he was going to go through. People today in the world are doing all kinds of things. And then in and then we look at that. And although a lot of times, you know, we give excuses for people that are not saved or not going to church, and we say, well, they don't know, but the, the fact is they choose not to know. Right. They choose not to know the Christ that we know. Yes. Amen? Mm -hmm. And they're foolish. And I ain't going to fool. Actually, Psalms 14 chapter tells you that the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. Okay, so back on topic, Dion. We sometimes give excuses for those that don't know. Amen. Yeah. But I'm trying to figure out what's the world looking at the church, the ones that are supposed to know. The ones that come into church every Sunday and lift their hands up in a hallelujah tantrum. Amen. Yeah. The ones that holler, thank you, Jesus. Praise be the Lord. Amen. Praise the wonderful name of the Lord. And when the music starts, you shout all over the place. This is the church. And the world is looking. And what the world sees is that some of us that are in the church yelling, hallelujah, hosanna, thank you, Jesus, have just got through fighting over a parking space in the parking lot. The world is looking at how some of us get cut off in traffic and we can't help but to stop and say something. And even sometimes throw our middle finger up. Yet run into the church and try to make it to the choir stand before it's too late. Run into the church and try to take our positions in the pulpit so we can be on time. I wonder what the world is looking at when they see that moment in our life. Palm Sunday should remind us that the reign of Jesus Christ is, for the, is far greater than anything we could ever imagine. It is far greater greater than anything our minds could ever conceive. You see, man looks at the situation as it is and tries to analyze it, and then he turns around and he looks for somebody to help him that he thinks matches the skill level that he needs. But this is God saying, this is not your battle, it is the Lord's. Yeah. God has the ultimate plan. God has the perfect plan. God knows what he's doing. That's why he sent his son to the cross to die for us when he did. This is why we celebrate this week because Christ is the ultimate sacrifice that we have now and can say we are set free. John 11, 25 says, he said unto her, I am the resurrection yeah. and the life. Yeah. And whosoever believeth on me will live even if he dies. So you see, we don't even have to worry about dying because we ain't going to live. Amen? We are saved because of the finished work of the cross. So get this in your head and understand there's nothing that you can do to be saved other than to accept Christ as your Savior. Amen. We have so much to be grateful for today and, 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 and so much this whole week that we need to be jumping and shouting. And I'm sorry to say it, I don't like to talk politics, I really don't. But the president was like, I hope we can open up on Easter. And all of us was like, is he crazy? But we should have been saying it's Easter. That's the day our Savior rose. And Lord, if there's any way possible, let us be out on Easter. Amen. That's what the Christians should have been saying. Amen. But we are getting distracted from the true meaning of what we're doing today. We're getting distracted, and I know it's hard to not be distracted with people dying all around us. Amen. But Jesus made it through that whole week, this whole week coming up, knowing his end. Jesus knew what he was going through, but he knew that his end was going to be.
be great pain, great sacrifice. And he knew that he was going to be up on the cross. And if Jesus wanted to, he could have come down and saved himself. But he decided to stay on the cross just so you and I could live. So let us choose this day to say focus on what our purpose is. Let us choose this day to continue to worship our Lord and Savior. Let us choose this day to be thankful for the gift that God has given us. For the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 9 and 15, thanks be to God for this undescribable gift. This gift he gave us is undescribable. Don't let the moment make a fool of you. We must stay focused on the purpose and the plan. Jesus, he heard the applause. He saw the emotions of the people. But Jesus reminded and kept in mind his purpose and the plan. Jesus knew what he was about to face wasn't easy, but he kept in mind his purpose and plan. We got to keep in mind that what we're facing is not easy. But God already promised that he would see us through. He did not promise skies always blue. He did not promise pain without um, the sunshine when I ring. But God did promise to keep us and to go with us even until the end of the earth. Yes, we know the song where to pick up his pen and I used to say it. The road is rough and the going gets tough and the hills are going to be hard to find. But I decided a long time ago and there is no doubt in my mind I made Jesus my choice. Don't let the moment make a fool of you. So you are having a good moment. You wake up in the morning and say, oh, what a beautiful morning. And we gotta be able to sing 
is our God. How great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. I want the world Amen. But God, we know what you are able to do. Amen. 